Welcome back to Auto Looks Online. This week we're looking at the 2013 Lotus Esprit. Although still in the concept form, it seems that Paris has been a pretty bustling place this year. With the release of the new Lamborghini Sesto uh, concept, the Lotus Esprit, the Lotus Elise, uh, Lotus City Car. Been a neat one. But this time, let's take a look at the much anticipated Lotus Esprit. Now, this is one car that a lot of people have been waiting for for a very long time. Okay, it's been what 2001, 2002 is around last years that the Lotus Esprit graced our uh, many roads and countrysides. Well, it seems that Lotus has tried to bring back the once famous Lotus Esprit from that good old James Bond movie. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me. Everybody remembers that car. Nobody ever forgets uh, Submarine Lotus. Perfect design, perfect looking car. That's contradiction. But <laughs> let's take a look at the new 2013, possible 2013 Lotus of Spring. Well, for beginners, Lotus is gone with that nice sleek design that they once graced our famous hillsides with. Very simple, but curvy and boxy outline. Yes, from far away, you could seem to think that this thing may be a Lotus, or some of us remember from the 1970s and 80s, and up to the early 90s, the Vector supercars from the United States. But Lotus has done a very well done job with this car. Let's just see. Up front, very nice glass. The windshield is just phenomenal. It's braked in the proper ways. Uh, wheels, wheels, uh, you can say they're good. They seem to be a little uh, Lamborghini-esque, you might say. Still a Lotus appeal, but seems more Italian than British. Of course, they are owned by Malaysians, you never know. Air and ducts in the front. Uh, looking down here, there, well, even just a minute. Mini one right there. The front lip spoiler pushed out, I'd say just a little too far. It makes the car look like awesome, but it is just a tiny bit too far on the front end. You can uh, bring it back just a tiny bit because it's kind of adding a uh, bottom bumper look. Then it was slanted just about the entire way with a tiny little one. It might be a little perfect. Uh, headlights. Headlights are just. Just amazing. These things are neat. Just like they're very simple, but they flow with the car very well. And they flow along the body line, the hood line, the buffer line. All three main categories, you know, make a front end look exceptional. Now, looking along the side here, we can see the fact that it's got very well done uh, body lines. They curve perfectly with the car. They've done a well done job of. Kind of creating a sporty look. Now let's move on to the back end of this thing. Out back. Oh, okay. What can I say? They're bringing back the old supercars. Like, let's say, Vector with the rear end of this thing. Very long, very flat, very rippled, and very mean. This thing's just mean from front to rear. The only thing that might seem a little boring about this is, uh, it is still a simple outline if you see it from the side, from far away. But up close, this thing is wild. Uh, backlights, amazing. They go with more of a Lamborghini Revention style, where they've cut a hole for a tail light, but they fill it in with an exposed tail light. A night, this nice black appeal right here kind of blends in. Well, not blends in. Kind of stands out from the car. Gives it a more mean look. It kind of blends in with the uh, re-engine sits. Okay, the exhaust port. One great thing about this car. I see a lot of supercars are starting to go this way. Just one big massive exhaust port in the center. Now, Lamborghini is one of the first cars that we all remember doing this with the old Marcielago. And, well, I remember, you remember the Diablo. Two big pipes in the back. Well, you're pushing that much air of a V12, you kind of need those big exhaust ports. Uh, 
air ducts. You gotta have them with a car like this. Why? That engine is gonna overheat unless you do. Trust me, I know. I had to develop a brand new hood for my Rio. Why? Because the air end duct on the front end is about this big. Okay? Drop a turbo in that thing. You're pushing on a ton of heat. You need more cold air. This thing has got enough cold air ports to get rid of this stuff. They could have added one here or here, but they had the center one. Yeah, there and there. It might be a little, a little overboard. May help with the cooling, but at least they didn't go with one big massive air duct right here. I see they do have a lower one right there, which is created a nice, very nice appeal. It looks like a running board, but it still kind of gives it that wild attitude. Now, for overall appeal on this thing, I'm going to have to give this thing a 9 out of 10. Why? Very futuristic. Very outgoing. The only point that I'm going to take away from it is the fact that it still seems like it's starting to blend in. Lexus LFA. Um, what's that Spanish supercar? The GTA Spano. That, that thing was a very simple design. Very fast. This thing sort of follows the same suit. I don't know. A lot of supercars are starting to go with this more, I should say, box and edge design. We saw a lot of this back in the 1970s with, well, let's say, Vector, uh, Aston Martin, Lamborghini. Everybody remembers the original Countach. So I give it a 9 out of 10. It's not, can't say it's perfect. Still got some decent feel. Uh, Sect appeal. Oh, this thing's just going to draw heads. <laughs> Trust me, this thing's going to work just like a Ferrari or Lamborghini. It'll make uh, women wet and men, well, let's just say, I want to change your pants sometimes. Uh, overall, it's one wild car. For me, it all looks, I'm going to have to give this thing a 9 out of 10. Wild, amazing, great looking car. Uh, it's nice to see the Lotus is coming back. Nice to see that they're going to be redoing the Spree, the Elise. They might be working on a city car. They're bringing back a little Gonda name. All this from dumping themselves from uh, Ford a couple of years ago. Well, this is Everett J saying thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you next week.